How's it going Star Seekers? Got Geek here and in this review we're going to be taking a look at a game called Bridge Strike, a vertically scrolling shoot em up where you pilot various vehicles up a river, collecting coins as you destroy bridges and enemies whilst navigating through increasingly more difficult terrain, avoiding fighter jets, mines and other obstacles. The game is a port of a mobile game, which in itself is essentially a spiritual successor to the 1987 Atari 2600 classic River Raid, which features similar gameplay and mechanics. So as we begin the game we hit the main menu with a few options available to us. Selecting settings to begin with we've got some simple game settings including audio and language and a toggle to stop the game's intro playing when we start it up. The help option on the main menu gives us a bit of an introduction into the game, telling us its backstory and the kind of enemies that we can expect. And lastly we have the statistics page which is empty at first but will track your stats as you play. So hitting play we get a few more options and we can first jump into the tutorial. Here we can learn how to move our vehicle using the left analog stick and we can use A to fire some missiles and destroy different vehicles which block our way. We also learn how to refuel our vehicle by holding down on the analog stick as we pass over these carriers and to begin with I kept accidentally firing my missiles which can also destroy the carriers. Finally we reach a bridge which we can blow up to complete the tutorial. So back in the play menu we can take a look at the hangar, here we see a number of different vehicles and these range from helicopters to hovercrafts and each cost a different amount of coins to unlock. Each vehicles manoeuvrability and speed is slightly different which offers a little bit of gameplay variety. So the first of Bridge Strike's two game modes is Raid, this is essentially the game's arcade mode and your mission is to survive for as long as possible. As you begin the river is relatively straight and there's not that many obstacles to contend with, but as you make your way up the river you'll encounter many different boats, aircraft and submarines which we presume are our enemies and we can destroy these for a coin. Our current coin count is seen at the top of the screen and next to this is our fuel gauge which will slowly drain so we need to regularly refuel at carriers. If we end up running out of fuel we'll explode losing a life and we start with 3 lives which can be seen on the left of the screen and below this is another counter that records the number of bridges that were destroyed. So I originally thought that raid mode was procedurally generated and it was endless but looking at the two runs side by side we can see this isn't the case and the terrain and enemy layout in each run appears to be identical. The one thing that is random though is the weather and this comes at random in several different forms from overcast skies which darken the screen to full on thunderstorms which cause lightning strikes from some clouds which will destroy us if we touch them. The surrounding terrain also changes at various points, shifting from urban environments to polluted cityscapes featuring mutant like creatures and snow capped hillsides to desert like terrains where the odd UFO can be seen flying by. Now I believe that raid mode does have an end, as the stats page has a counter that says raids complete, but I played several raid mode games for about 10 minutes each and I didn't see the end, so I'm not sure how long it lasts for. Difficulty in raid mode is slowly increased as we go, with terrain layout becoming more challenging to navigate and enemy vehicles becoming more frequent and varied. For the most part though the game isn't very challenging and apart from poor flying there are two things which will cause the majority of your deaths. Firstly there are aircraft which fly in from the side of your screen. You get some flashing red lines beside your vehicle indicating the direction that they'll come from but they don't tell you how far up the screen that they'll enter from and it's often difficult to concentrate on navigating difficult terrain whilst watching the sides of the screen. The second main run ender doesn't begin to appear until you're a fair distance up the river where it begins to split giving you different channels to travel up. Some of these converge further up but others lead to completely dead ends. Now the game's camera is probably one of its most frustrating aspects as it constantly shifts in and out as you speed up and slow down and when it's close into you, you often don't see a dead end until it's too late. The camera can also be an issue at certain points where it stays zoomed out, it makes it harder to spot the small enemy aircraft incoming from the sides of the screen, especially when it darkens during a storm. So following the loss of all your lives you can choose to spend some coins to grant you 3 additional lives and continue your run. You can do this multiple times but the coin cost increases each time you do. Alternatively you can decide to end your run and a summary of it will be displayed. So heading back to the main menu we can then check out the game's second mode, Campaign. Here we can see 4 different operations we can partake in, 
each one containing 10 levels. We must complete a level to unlock the next one and complete all 10 levels to unlock the next operation. Now the levels in campaign mode task you with completing specific challenges. Firstly, you've got levels which task you with destroying all bridges or enemies in them. And missing a single enemy or bridge will result in you failing the level. The game won't tell you this until you've finished the level, so if you think you've missed one, you're better off just restarting it. You can also earn between 1 and 3 medals in a mission, with maximum medals awarded for 0 deaths and high accuracy, but as far as I'm aware these medals have no value. The next mission type is Survivor Rescue, which the game doesn't instruct you on how to do, but it's essentially the same as refueling. You just hold down on your analogue stick as you pass over the guys waving the white flags. Next we have a mission type called Don't Lose Machine, which is some great English and it basically means you've got to reach the end of a mission without dying. We also have Don't Shoot, which is self-explanatory. We have to reach the end of the mission without shooting. And finally, we have Collect Gold, which contains no enemies and we need to collect every gold coin in the level. So I completed two of the game's four operations, and the second operation was slightly more difficult. Missions often required more kills, rescues or coins to be collected, and they also featured more complex terrain or an increased number of enemies. As far as I can tell, there are no additional coins rewarded for completing missions or operations, so I assume they're just there to break up your runs of raid mode. Now when it comes to my gameplay experience with Bridge Strike, I'm going to have to say it was a mediocre one. There was nothing standout about its gameplay mechanics or indeed the gameplay in general. And its graphics weren't bad, but again, there was nothing that really wowed me. Bridge Strike is likely going to be one of those games for people that's great to pick up and play for 5 minutes to kill a bit of time. But there's nothing really in it to keep you playing for long periods of time. It is a shmup, but its gameplay really doesn't offer much excitement or challenge when compared to almost any other shmup I've played. As the game's eShop description says, the action in the game isn't like your typical shmup mayhem, and it's clearly going to appeal more to fans of the original River Raid more than a hardcore shmup fan. Finally, as is the case with a lot of these type of games, the cost to unlock the additional vehicles is pretty ridiculous. I played for about 3 hours and managed to earn about 1700 coins and unlock 2 vehicles. The most expensive vehicle in the game is 10,000 coins, and considering enemies only drop a single coin and bridges have anywhere between 4 and 10 coins each, you're gonna have to blow up a hell of a lot of these to earn the 35,000 coins required to unlock everything in the game. So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Bridge Strike 1 out of 5 stars. Gameplay in Bridge Strike does manage to capture the essence of what made River Raid a classic, and I have no doubt that it'll appeal to fans of this or people looking for a time filler game. But content wise, there's very little on offer here. It should be noted that I dropped the game's star rating by one due to the price that they're asking for it on the eShop, especially considering the game is available for free on mobile. And I would definitely advise waiting for Bridge Strike to be discounted considerably before buying it. You can get the game on the UK Switch eStore currently with 50% off for £3.14, or from the US eStore for $3.98. Alternatively, the game's also available for free on the Android and Apple app stores. And that's it for this review of Bridge Strike. Drop it a like if it helped you out and consider subscribing to the channel for future Switch indie game reviews uploaded every few days. You can also let me know what you thought about the review and the game in the comment section below. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again to everyone for watching and until next time, game on.